Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Today we are joined by my friend and editor for SciShow and the SciShow Talk Show, Caitlin Hoffmeister, Hi. who is the person who has to cut together these multi-camera okay. shoots. SciShow Talk Show, it's the part of SciShow where we talk. And today we're going to talk about some things. So this is the way that it sort of works. I don't really know what's going to happen when I come and sit down in this chair and they bring me stuff and then I just respond. So if I'm not talking intelligently, it's because I don't know what I'm talking about. What do you have for me today, Kayla? Um, today I want to talk to you about flying bicycles. Is this like, like E.T.? Mostly it's about man-powered helicopters. People are competing. There are two teams, especially right now, one in Toronto and one in Maryland, um, competing for the Sikorsky Prize, which is $250,000 goes to the first team to make a man-powered man helicopter. These are... Uh these science prizes are interesting to me, <laughs> uh, and and I think that they're cool. I think that they're worthwhile. Um, I, I think Google just announced some large prize for the first private company to get a robot to the moon and traverse a certain amount of distance on the moon. But at the same time, it feels a little bit like a man-made uh, or a, a man-powered helicopter is maybe a little less useful to the cause of science. I don't know, though. I could be wrong. I that's, I think, I think it's maybe completely not useful at all. <laughs> okay. but, which is but why it's is... kind of awesome, because they're just doing it to see right. if they can do it. I think that that's, it is, that is worthwhile. Yeah. Just to see if you can. Is, was uh, Da Vinci's flying craft supposed to be man-powered? I think so, and the first one was actually, the first one in like the 70s, no, sorry, the first one in the late 80s was called the Da Vinci, because it was based off of his... I guess it would Big have to be because they did not sense. have um, internal combustion engines back then. Yeah, could have been like some other animal. Yeah, <laughs> just birds. Yeah. Lots yes. of birds. <laughs> Look, yes. I made my helicopter work by tying a bunch of birds <laughs> to this piece of wood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like like you were saying about getting the robot to traverse like a certain amount of area. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot there's of rules. really so, but they have to get. Um, three meters into the air mm -hmm. and hover for 60 seconds, but they don't have to be three meters up for 60 seconds. And they have, they have to, to stay. get there and then Yeah, hover. and then hover. And they have to stay within a 10 meter right. square. And most of these are like big. 10 meters across, so they don't have. Why are they so big? Um, I actually, guess maybe they're not 10 meters across. Yeah, I think they're like 10 feet across. Yeah. Still. No, they're 100 feet across. 100 feet across? Yeah. That's more than 10 meters. Yeah. So they have to like. I think there's the center, the human-powered part, has to be within that 10 meter. But um, it looks like a helicopter. It has helicopter rotors. It does, like, and it has, it has four rotors. Okay. And then um, that makes sense. the one in Canada is just this big, beefy guy like riding a bike mm -hmm. like this. And then the one in Maryland, they it's like a more like a recumbent bicycle. Uh -huh. And so they pedal with their legs and they use their and arms. The, oh, jeez. Yeah, which is ridiculous. <laughs> So. That sounds that sounds really exhausting to me. Yeah. I mean, you got to find the right guy. It's like a jockey. You have to have some guy with just legs. That's what I think too. Is because this guy in Canada probably weighs like one sixty. Yeah. And uh, but he's like a professional cyclist. But mm -hmm. I like am way smaller. That's true. So. That's true. You are tiny. Yeah. Because you want to so. be the first. Yeah. Person in nine meters of air by their own power. Yeah. Three three meters of air, so like three ten meter. feet. So I mean, what what are the uh, the obstacles that they have to overcome? Like, what is what's holding them back? Why can't it happen? Like, what have they done to make it possible thus far? Mostly, I think they can get. Um, I think the record right now is nine point four feet, so they're super close, um, and they can go over a minute, but they just can't steer them. Like, they get <laughs> up there like, and they just drift. It's so cute, because you see the pilot, like, <laughs> not <laughs> really You can't control it. Yeah. It has no control yeah. services. It's just yeah. like, And okay, everybody's just, like, one yelling. One year. Yeah, and they're, it's, they've spent all this time, and, like, it's not the smoothest landing, so if it, right. when it lands, it's going you to guess break you a little. You only do that. <laughs> <laughs> on a really calm day. They do it inside. They oh, all do it okay. in like indoor soccer fields and stuff. Yeah. Jeez, this is yeah. complicated. It is. It's probably not super loud. No. Probably yeah. very quiet. Yeah. Sort of eerily even. Yeah. Because they're all like yelling and excited. Mm -hmm. But it's, you can't hear the machine at all. Yeah. Mm. The, I guess this part is the machine. 
This but part is the machine. <laughs> We're quiet machines. Yeah. We don't make a lot of noise yeah. in our operation, which yeah. is pretty cool. Thanks, Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah, I have no stump hank for you. Now you're not even going to try to stump me. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> it's a daunting task. It is. It is. <laughs> But we are going, do you know what kind of animal we're about to see? I don't. You don't? I know all of the animals that are coming, I Jaylen think. organized the arrival <laughs> of the animals. But, but I don't know which one I get. She didn't get to pick. Yeah. That was very nice of us. <laughs> okay, well, let's be surprised. Okay. Jesse from Animal Wonders has a truly spectacular guest for us today. This is Serafina, and she's a Hi, red fox. Serafina. Hi, Serafina. How, how, Hi. You were just taking a little nap in the corner. Yeah, and she's going to check right. things Hi. out and say, where am I? Um, red foxes can actually come in every color. Well, not purple, but <laughs> <laughs> um, any natural color. They can be brown, they can be white, black, gray, brownie red like this, an amber color, or they can be that striking red color with the white underneath. So they can be all different colors. It's just individual-wise. And her coat's going to look a lot different in the summer than it is in the winter. So right now she has her full winter coat on. She has that huge fluffy tail, mm -hmm. pretty typical of what you'd think a fox would look like. But in the winter time, or in the summertime, she's going to be look about half that size. Mm -hmm. Her tail's going to be actually pretty skinny, <laughs> and she's going <laughs> to lose it all so she doesn't stay so hot. Yeah. You checking everything Hi. out? Yeah, who's over there? <laughs> is she? She's pretty young, right? She's about two years old, almost two. Mm -hmm. How uh, is this still puppy stage? Kit. kit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> she's gonna be a kit until about six months old, <laughs> and then she'll be considered a vixen. Are they native to here? Native to here. Yep. And they're actually red foxes live all over the world now. They've been introduced. Mm -hmm. They're a pretty nasty, invasive species in some places. Right. They're always. They're Everything introduced. I read about them, they're like killing everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I know, which is which is sad for them. Um, but you they're know, just like doing they're their killing. thing. They're yeah, pretty they're good, good at it. They're good at it. Good at surviving. Um, the, uh, so they were introduced for hunting because people wanted to hunt them. Sport hunting. That's yeah. such a the worst yeah. reason ever. I know. That's I even know. worse than like bringing in kudzu for an ornamental plant. <laughs> <laughs> But it's kind of like great comeuppance. They're like, you want to hunt me? I'm just going to kill like, everything else. Watch this. Look yeah. what I can do. Want a treat? Hi, sweetheart. There you go. And she's eaten some apple and yam. These guys are omnivores, so they'll pretty much eat anything that you give them. So you notice her posturing there? So she's up, her ears are erect, and she's looking at something when she's you know, curious about it. But if she's a little bit nervous, she's going to put her head down, and she's going to try and get a different perspective on that. So those eyes. Now she has eyes like a cat. So cats will do that too. They can kind of see vertically instead of horizontally. Okay. And that's good for them hunting animals mm -hmm. on the ground and animals up in the trees. And she's very smart. We've been working with her at Animal Wonder. She does, she knows some fun stuff. She knows how to wave. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows how to dig. Oh, I know you moved that. You want to dig one more time? Good job. And we use these behaviors to show off what she does in the wild. So if she found food in the wild, she has a circle too. Um, she would do a circle. She would do a circle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she would. If she found too much food and she couldn't eat it all at once, she would cache it. And so she would dig a hole and she would put the food in there and she'd bury it with her nose. And then she would pee on it <laughs> in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> She would pee on it and it would be a marker. So during the winter time when she can't find food, she would just have to smell for her pee spots underneath the snow and she'd dig it up um, and she'd eat the food. And the interesting thing, the really neat thing, is that she's going to pee on it again but with a different smell of urine saying, I've already dug this cash up. How do you what? determine what your urine smells I don't like, know. She I eats don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not as talented like, as her. Is it like a winter smell? Or is it like this time I'm going to pee different? Or it's like old know. smell and slightly newer smell? Maybe. Maybe, Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. You can tell how old it is. I'm not really sure. I know that... Um, I think that I'm not making this up, but we'll have to check <laughs> before we put it online. But I'm pretty sure that lobsters can control the scent of their pee. Okay. And they pee through their faces. And so they pee at each other to tell each other how they're feeling. <laughs> wow. That's something I know about lobsters. Glad, I'm glad <laughs> we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so if she buried a lobster, he could trick her right. and like spray different scented pee. Absolutely. Uh, I think the lobster would have bigger problems. <laughs> Probably <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> time. I feel like she would. Serafina? Sarah? No, that's not. <laughs> Serafina? 
She's nope. like, hello, opposite. Michael. Opposite. Opposite. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Serafina, thank you for coming on the show today. Bye. I hope that you have a lovely uh, winter. <laughs> you want to come and see everybody else who's hanging out? Oh, what you, what's that? What's that? Is that a camera? <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse, thanks for bringing her in. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you once again for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show, where on SciShow we talk. And thank you to Caitlin for Thanks. joining us. This was a fun time. Thanks. It was fun for me, too. Bye. Bye.